Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you John Garfield, Eleanor Parker, and Dane Clark in Pride of the Marines. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. While we prepare to usher in the new year, I think it's not only timely but heartening for us to hear the real-life story of a battle-scarred Marine who faces one of the most difficult problems war can leave. But make no mistake, our play tonight from Warner Brothers' Pride of the Marines is not a story of sadness, but a story of the triumph of a great love. It follows closely the life of a real living person, Sergeant Al Schmidt, from my hometown of Philadelphia. The part of Al is played by John Garfield, duplicating his original screen role. Co-starred with John, also from the screencast, are Eleanor Parker and Dane Clark as the sweetheart and friend who stand by Al with understanding and devotion. Tonight, as we look ahead to the new year, may I thank you all for your support during the months past and your friendly letters and suggestions. While Lux Flakes continue to brighten and lighten your daily tasks at home, rest assured that we shall continually strive to bring you the best in radio entertainment in 1946. It's curtain time, and here's Pride of the Marines, starring John Garfield as Al, Eleanor Parker as Ruth, and Dane Clark as Lee. My name is Schmidt, Al Schmidt. Maybe you heard of me, maybe not. Anyhow, what I've got to tell you starts back in 1941 in Philadelphia. I was living at the time, boarding with friends of mine, Jim Merchant and his wife, Ella May. Hey, what's the flowers for, Al? Somebody kicked a bucket? Well, this here's for your wife. Where is she? In the kitchen, cooking. On your anniversary? Well, that's her idea. Hi, Al. Are they for me, those flowers? They're for your hard-working mama, honey. Hey, Ma. Yeah? Look what Al's brought you. Hurry up. I look pretty stupid carrying these around. Happy anniversary. The only couple I know who are happy, though married. Well, one of these days you'll be bringing flowers to a wife of your own. I live alone and like it. You live alone and look it. Better get ready for dinner. Yeah. Come on, let's get shaved, Al. Okay, honey, let's. Al? Huh? What do you shave for, Al? Oh, to make me look handsome? I think you're handsome already. <laughs> That's nice. Al, do you like girls? I sure do, sister. When did you start liking girls? When I found out they weren't boys. Oh. Mom says she knows lots of legible girls. Yeah, I know. That's why she's always inviting girls here to meet you. I'll tell you a big secret, Loretta. I am going to get married. Honest? Yeah. When? Oh, five or six years. To me? <laughs> well, sure. What do you think? Oh, gee. <laughs> okay, now give me a kiss. Dinner's waiting. Oh, we won't eat till Ruth gets here. Who? Ruth. That's a friend of Mom's. We're having her for dinner. Another one? Where's that razor? I think I'll just cut my throat. Al! No, I guess I won't. If I cut my throat, I wouldn't be able to marry you, would I? Now, don't worry, sugar. We'll take care of this Ruth thing. Did you ring the bell? Yes. Oh, uh, don't the merchants live here? Yeah, they live here. Oh. Your name Ruth? How did you know? What's the difference? Ella May is in the kitchen. Sit down. Thank you. They have a lovely home, haven't they? Oh, I suppose you'd like one for yourself someday. Well, yes, someday. I thought so. Why, look at the flowers. Yeah. So many of them, it's almost like a wedding. A wedding? Oh, boy, that's a hot one. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I don't know. Ruth, I didn't hear you come in. Well, happy anniversary. Thanks. Oh, I see you and Al have met. Yeah, I feel as if I've met her dozens of times. Come on upstairs, Ruth. Jim, Ruth's here. See you in a minute, Ruth. Good. Hey, Al, what do you think? Just one thing. Ella May has got to stop picking out girls for me. Yeah, marrying off guys, it's kind of a disease with her. But this one, Al, I kind of thought you'd like her. She's a terrific bowler. She is, huh? Ella May says she bowls 200. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Just wait till I get her on a bowling alley. Just wait. What 
What's the score, Ella May? You've got 220. Uh, Ruth's got 40. Bowls 200, does she? Um, you know, I figured out what's wrong with your game, Ruth. Uh, the alley must be warped. Shows your sense of humor. Hey, Al, uh, what do you say we go slop up a few beers? Oh, but Jim, Ruthie wants to get a game going, don't you, Ruthie? Yes, I'd enjoy another game. Well, we might as well run along then. Good night, kids. Have a good time. Good night. Yeah, good night. Good night. You know, um, I think there's something wrong with the way I play. You don't mean it. Mm, I'd be terribly grateful if you'd show me. Well, uh, the first thing you do is you got to bring the ball all the way back. You see, like this. Oh, now I see where all your power comes from. Yeah, yeah, you see, like this. Oh, on that little step you do, that little dance, like... Is that one of your secrets of success? <laughs> well, uh, that's just a little mistake I made. You made a mistake? Are you trying to ride me? Oh, well, now you're angry. I'm not angry. Either put that bowling ball or throw it. I didn't say on my foot. I missed your foot. By a quarter of an inch. How would you feel if I... For the way you've acted tonight, I didn't think you knew what feelings are. Are you trying to make a monkey out of me? It isn't hard. You're not very bright. Is that so? Well, who asked you on this date? You cooked it up with LMA so you can hook yourself a husband. Look out! What are you trying to do? Cripple me? I'd just like to say one word, Mr. Schmidt. As far as I'm concerned, I've spent a dreary evening with an awful drift. Goodbye. Now, wait a minute. Hey, wait. Wait. <laughs> Ruth. Hope your bus isn't crowded. We would have to work late just when I have a dinner date. Oh, well, have a swell time tonight. And happy birthday. Thanks a lot, Bertie. See you Monday. Hiya, Ruth. Get in. I'll ride you home. Go away. But our little boy is sick, Ruth. He keeps crying for you. Stop being a clown and go away. It's all right if you don't love me anymore. But how can you desert an innocent child? Young woman, you ought to be ashamed. Go home to your child. Go on, sister. Go home to your kid. Oh, all right. I'll go. Probably crying its head off. Oh, that's not so bad. He's got two heads. Two heads? Hiya, Ruth. My, but you're a scream. Now, oh, don't get sore. Isn't this better than the bus? And why don't you answer the phone? I do, for some people. I've called you five times since we went bowling, and I think your Uncle Ralph is swell, except he, he sounds a little too old for me to date. Oh, try harder. He won't hook you. Look, I'm apologizing, see? How about driving a little faster? It's my birthday, and I've got a dinner date. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, just hang on. You said you were in a hurry. Which house? There, where the car's parked. Oh, that's my date. What time is it? Oh, it's early yet. Ah! Hey, what's the idea? Oh, it was an accident, Harry. He didn't mean to bump in. What's the matter, bud? Didn't you see my car? See it? I hit it, didn't I? You want to make something of it? Oh, Ruth, uh, don't stay out too late, sweetheart. I'll be back at 10.30. Huh? Oh, what makes men do such crazy things? Women. And I hope you have a very happy birthday with him. But, Harry, I... So long, two-timer. Hello, Uncle Ralph. I... This is Uncle Al, sweetheart, and it's 10.30. The nerve. The nerve of you. Happy birthday, Ruth. Can I interest you in a whirlwind courtship? Now, oh, look at you. What girl wants to stay home on her birthday? Sorry, but I'm going to bed. Then Good how... night. Well, then how about celebrating your birthday tomorrow? Something special, huh? Uh, like uh, uh, going to the fights, ice hockey, uh, roller skating. Oh, I get it. You either want to exercise or see other people exercise. No, don't get me wrong, Ruthie. I'll do anything you say, like uh, going hunting. Believe me, there's nothing like it when the weather is cool and crisp. Mm -hmm. Why, I bet you've never been hunting. Okay, we'll leave early in the morning. How's six o'clock? Oh, awful. Good. I'll pick you up at six sharp, Ruthie. Night. <laughs> Boy, that fire sure feels good, don't it? How's the coffee coming? Ready in a minute. Hey, some luck, huh? Look at these pheasants. You're a wonderful shot, Al. Yeah, boy, when I get out in the country like this, I don't know why I'd come back to the city. Why do you? Well, because I'm sitting pretty now. First class burner at the foundry, making 40 bucks a week, trying hard to spend it all. You want to help me spend it? Easy come, easy go, hmm? You know, you might save some for a rainy day. Oh, there ain't going to be any rainy days. I got it all arranged. Real rugged, aren't you? You know, I like the way you stand up to me. I like the way you laugh at my corny jokes, and I like it when you say you're going to do something and you do it, and you don't just make up a lot of silly excuses. Like what? Oh, like uh, going hunting. I didn't think you'd come. And look at me now. Yeah. Look at you now. Ah, that's the second time you've kissed me without warning. You want a warning next time? Like what? 
Oh, something like, um, hello? Mm, that's a fair enough warning. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Al. <laughs> Jim, what are you doing to your radio? Oh, I'm fixing it. The adjuster case was grounded to the oscillator coil. Well, it's all fixed. Five bucks, it works, too. <laughs> I haven't got five bucks. Well, here goes. Listen. Think? Come on, Marconi. Find your daughter. It's time to eat. Loretta. Hey, Loretta. Ruth. Yes? Uh, Jim and Ella may have picked out a joint for New Year's Eve. You want to come? Or should I find some good-looking dame? Hey, suit yourself. Come to think of it, I don't have any other boyfriends anymore. Oh, so you want a new crop of boyfriends. I didn't say I did. But maybe it's a good idea. You know, as soon as I get a little more dough, I'm going up to Canada. Just fishing and hunting. You want to come? Ask me when the time comes. I always told you I was a rolling stone. Sure. Uh-uh. There goes that radio again. Well, it doesn't sound broken. Ladies and gentlemen. You see? A report has just come in that the Japanese have bombed Pearl Harbor. We resume our musical program pending further details momentarily. Where's Pearl Harbor? I don't know. You want to come with me New Year's Eve? I might, if you ask me now. Like this? Now, you know what I... Well, fine thing. Once he told me he was going to marry me. I think we're both out of luck, Loretta. Jim, where's Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor? Oh, it's down the Jersey coast near Atlantic City someplace. Wait a minute. Wait. We interrupt this program with news of grave importance. Huh? War broke out today in the Pacific. On, Without warning, waves there. of Japanese planes attacked Hawaii. The United States is at war with Japan. Please stand by. Well, what do you know? Oh, sit down, everybody. The roast is getting cold. Hey, we're at war, honey. The United States is at war. Yes, dear, I know. Now come on and start carving. You gonna be a soldier, Al? Heck no. I'm going to Canada and shoot bears. Oh, Ruth, I hope you two are going with us New Year's Eve. Dear, I forgot to light the candles. Oh, relax. I'll do them. I'm the best little candle lighter in Philly. You know? What? You know, I bet it might be more fun shooting Japs than bears. Ah, you'll never get a chance, kid. The Marines will take care of them. The Marines? The Marines? Yeah. Ah, the whole thing will blow over in a week. No takers, Al. Come on, everybody. Pass your plate. Hey, for you, Rosie. Telephone. Oh, thanks. Hello? Hello, honey. Say, uh, about New Year's Eve, uh, don't look like I'm going to make it, Ruthie. Oh, fine thing. Hang on, honey. You are now talking to Private Schmidt, U.S. Marines. Ah. <laughs> kind of sudden, huh? Look, let's celebrate tonight, huh? Make up for New Year's, huh? Oh, Al, I, I just don't know what to say. And think up something, honey, and make it good. I'll pick you up at the usual time. What do you know? I'm a Marine! <laughs> I, uh, I guess Uncle Ralph's asleep, huh? Yes, it's pretty late. I, uh, I don't know whether to ask you to sit down or what. No, no, I, got, I gotta go home and pack, sweetie. The, that train leaves in five hours. Ruthie, I, I want a kiss. I, I want a kiss that'll last me for the duration. You got one like that? I'll do my darndest. Hello, darling. You know, it's exciting going off the wall. Yes, I... Guess if I were a man, I'd be doing the same thing. I'm glad you're not a man. Why? Why do you think? Honey, look, I, uh... There's a lot of things I like to say, but I, I don't know how to say them, so I, I'll just cut it down to goodbye. But I want to see you off at the train. No, you got to get some sleep. I'm not tired, It's Al. better that way, Ruthie. Look, I, I want you to get back into circulation. You don't have to worry about me. Sure, sure. It, it, it isn't as if there's anything set between us. That's right. So... Don't think too much about me, see? There are lots of other guys and... Don't worry about me, Al. Don't worry. Well, uh, goodbye, Ruthie. Al, goodbye. Oh, uh... Coffee, coffee, donut, cup of coffee, coffee. How about you, soldier? Cup of coffee? Huh? No, no, thanks. All alone? So what? Well, nothing, but we'll look around you. Everybody kissing his girl goodbye, and mothers and fathers, and... Well, it's the kind of thing you read about, isn't it? Well, I'd sooner read about it, see? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. Oh, you didn't bother me, it's just that... Wait a minute. Huh? Excuse me, sister, excuse me! Don't turn away, Ruthie. I spotted you. I could spot you a mile off. So you came to the station anyway. Are you sore, Sure, I'm sore. 
You were just going to stand here and let me get on the train without saying a word. I just wanted to see you, Al. I, I, I might have called to you at the last Limited, minute. Leaving on track number two for Wilmington. We only got a All minute, Ruthie. Aboard. Listen, you love me? Oh, yes. Well, me too, you. Aboard, and I don't want please. you doing what I said about going All out with aboard. other guys. I guess I wouldn't have anyway, Al. Will you wait for me, Ruthie? You'll have to pry me loose from the sticking oh, kind. I want one last look at that sweet face you got. Don't change the way you look, will you? Oh, take care of yourself, darling, and... Don't be a hero or anything. Honey, I'm going to wrap myself in cellophane. I got a reason now. I guess I, I, get a, I got to get on that train now. Oh, here, I, I was going to give you this at the house. Al, but... the train's starting. Hurry, you can mail it to me. No, no, here, I want you to have it now. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye, Al. That's kind of big. If you don't like it, throw it away. Goodbye, Ruthie. I even like your hat. A ring. An engagement ring. Oh, Al, it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful ring in the world. Al. Oh. Something the matter, lady? Did you miss somebody? No, no. But I'm sure going to. In just a moment, you'll hear Act Two of Pride of the Marines, starring John Garfield. Next to be seen in Warner Brothers, Nobody Lives Forever. Back of most men in Hollywood is usually a very efficient secretary who smooths the wheels of production. Our guest tonight is Miss Eleanor Broder, secretary to Mitchell Lyson, director of Paramount's new and beautiful production, Kitty. How do you like being secretary to a director, Miss Broder? Very much. It's a chance to get a liberal education and get paid for acquiring it. Hmm, very gratifying. I hope my secretary is listening in. You might call me uh, chairman of the worrying committee. As you know, Mr. Keeley, if Mr. Lyson wants three pink elephants or something equally simple, he just tells me, and from then on, I worry about getting them. And like a good secretary, I'm sure you keep on worrying after the picture is in production. Yes, I double for audience reaction. I can't help laughing and crying and suffering right along with the actors. I nearly ruined my wardrobe when Olivia de Havilland was making to each his own. How was that? Well, I'd get so interested in the story, I'd lean against anything or sit down anywhere without thinking. And they don't dust those sets every morning. Well, <laughs> sounds like a job, job for luck, eh, John? What do you say, Miss Broder? Certainly was. I like wearing washable dresses, so I just took them home and luxed them. With good results, I trust. Of course, Mr. Kennedy. Lux just floated that dust right out and left the color in. After all, Mr. Kennedy, the studios themselves use Lux for all their washables. And some of them are really precious. That's praise from the top, Miss Broder. You'll be interested to know that actual tests confirm the studio's good judgment and yours. Colors stay lovely up to three times longer with Lux Care. Strong soap, hot water, and rough handling soon fade colors, leave fabrics old looking. Lux is so thrifty, it saves on cleaning bills. That's right. It takes less than a penny to Lux address. So, girls who want to be thrifty, Lux everything safe in water. Here's Mr. Keeley with Act Two. We continue with Pride of the Marines, starring John Garfield as Al, Eleanor Parker as Ruth, and Dane Clark as Lee. I didn't get many letters from Al. He wasn't much good at letter writing. But finally, in July, a card came. It didn't say much, only that Private Schmidt had arrived safely at his destination. I didn't know then that that destination... Men Waddle Canal. I hear they did it last night. Got four of our cruisers. Yeah. All they got to do is sit out there and spit at us. I'm going to dig this foxhole so deep it'll be just short of desertion. No sleep, no chow, no smokes, no mail, not enough planes, not enough Navy, not enough doctors. You know something, Al? We've been here two weeks. It's our anniversary. Remind me later. I'll bake a cake. Oh. Hey, here comes the corporal. Hiya, Diamond. What's the Hi, matter? Lee. Oh, hey, hello, Cole. What do you mean, oh. what's the matter? How many times you got to be told not to gang up like this? Oh. Hey, it's uh, time for us to relieve those guys at the river, ain't it? Yeah, it'll be dark soon. Just you and me and Al? That's right. Well, let's go. Let's make a run for it. What's the matter? You're crazy? It's nice and quiet now, ain't it? But just show that pretty kisser of yours and see what happens. They'll cut you in two. Then the two of us would go. Oh, Legs yeah. running one way, torso the other. Very funny. Come on, Court. Yeah, see you, guys. What's the matter with those guys we just relieved? Don't they ever learn nothing? What's the beat, Johnny? Or our machine gun. Look, they didn't change the bolt. It's still bird. Well, maybe there's a spare in the parts box. Check the water hose, Al. Water hose is clear. Yeah, no extra bolt in here. 
Fine. Al, what about the ready boxes? Tell you in a minute. Johnny, get a line in that bush across the river. Which one? Right there, right there. Come on, the light's failing. Left, 920. Yeah? Down six mils. Six mils left. Oh, why don't those guys learn how to make up a range card? Hey, I guess those are just birds, huh, Al? Yeah, they sound like birds. Every night it's the same thing. Birds got no right being up at night. I used to go hunting birds back in Pennsylvania. Listen, listen. They may try to cross tonight, see? So if they do, I figure they'll cross at the sandbar. That's right in front of us. Yeah, right in front of us. I got a hunch this here machine gun is going to get a workout tonight. Yeah, well, let them come. This is their chance. It'll come sooner or later. I'll take sooner. I'll take later. You know, maybe a, maybe a ship will come in tomorrow with some mail on it. Huh. Why is it that everything good is always going to happen tomorrow? What's the matter? What you looking at? Just across the river. Where? Uh, nothing there. Oh. Okay, Flash Lopley. Okay. Keep your eyes open, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. You see anything, Lee? You see anything? No, it's as quiet as a graveyard. Do you have to use that word? I thought you were sleeping. Too quiet to sleep. What's the use of... Uh-oh. Hey. Can you see him? Can you see any of them? No, no, that's their cheer. They're working up their nerve. It's getting closer, Lee. I know, I know. So what? Here it comes. Keep down, keep down. We won't open up until the last second. All they've got to do is wait across. Oh, they'll hit him from the side. Now, wait a minute. I think they're crossing. Now, Lee. Now. Oh, no, wait. Wait, then lay it across the sandbar, Johnny. Yeah, that's them. They're coming. Now, wait. Wait. I can hear them in the water. Wait. Now. Now, fire. Fire. Come on, will you load up, load up? They'll be back. We're loading as fast as we can. Lee. There they are. Johnny, there, there. They crossed Where? over. They're coming at us with your fire, fire. Oh, oh, oh. Johnny, he's hit. hit. He's hit. Johnny's hit. I'll take over, Al. I'll feed. I'll feed. Shut him down. Come on, you slimy pigs. Come on again. Will you lay off the all the ammunition we've got? What's Johnny doing? He's dead. Right through the fart, he's dead. You stinking yellow belly's the best guy in the world. Watch it, watch it, Al. Don't get trigger happy. Watch it. What's the matter? You want to... Ooh. Ooh, you hit. Oh. Al, I can't move. Where you hit? Where? Arm. The shoulder. Come on, get back, Al. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Al, short burst. We'll haul him, Lee. We'll haul him. Short burst. Come on, just try to get through. Just sure. try to get through. Just try. You die! You die! Dirty skippy, why can't I shut you up? Come on! I'll take you one of the hammer and punch! Al! Al, from the side, I hear something. Where? 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 Where the bushes. There's a chap, he's crawling. But he died! Look out, Al, look out! Al! Al! My face! I, I can't see! I can't see! Al, get down, will you get down? I can't see! Al! Al, what are you doing? What do you want with your 45? Oh, no, no. Don't do it, Al. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't shoot yourself. We'll get help soon. Don't, Al. Don't shoot myself. Just, just tell me where they are. Tell me where they're coming from. I'll shoot them. Tell me where they are, Lee. Tell me where they are. Tell me. I didn't hear from Al for a long time. But I thought of him every day and wondered and wondered. And then it was at the office a phone call came. It was my uncle. It's a letter, Ruth. It just came. From Al? No, no, the Naval Hospital in San Diego. Hospital? Yes. Al's there, Ruth. He can't write, but he's okay. Oh, he's safe. Oh, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> I sure got Ruthie trained, huh, Miss Pfeiffer? A letter from her every day. Yes, and you should be ashamed of yourself. This is a fine letter you've just dictated. It's going to run all of eight lines. Ah, oh, you Red Cross dames got other things to do. Go on, type it up. Oh, tell us something, Al. About yourself, your friends here at the hospital. I've done that. By now she knows Lee Diamond as good as me. There's one thing you haven't told her? No. She'll have to know sometime. Tomorrow I can tell her, maybe. After the doctor takes off the bandages. Al, the doctors didn't promise you'd see. Those medics never promise anything. Well, 
I'll go type your letter. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You can add this. Just say this. Uh, pretty soon I'll be coming home, Ruthie. Gosh, sweetheart, I can hardly wait to see you. I, uh, I, uh... Just make believe I'm a typewriter, Al. Don't be embarrassed. I, uh, I never told you what I feel like when you're in my arms. With that funny, kind of wonderful light in your eyes. Like you did on that railroad station platform the day I left. Say what you're thinking, Al. Say it. Oh, just say, uh, lots of love, Al. You know, that's the longest letter I ever wrote in my life. <laughs> I'll bet it is. Here, here, here's a picture of her, Miss Pfeiffer, see? Ain't that a nice face, though? Yes, Al. A man could lean on a girl like that. I don't lean on anyone. When these bandages come off, you'll see a guy that leans on nobody. You just watch me. Tomorrow, I'll write Ruthie a... That doggone letter she... That... What the heck with that? I'll phone her. That's what I'll do. I'll phone her. <laughs> Well, what are you waiting for, Doc? Why don't you say something? I'll take it easy, Al. I'm taking it easy, sir. You think I don't know I've been hurting my eyes? Why, I didn't expect to be wearing glasses for the rest of my life. Four-eyed Schmidt. But I don't mind that, sir. I don't mind glasses. I've got a flashlight, Al. I'm going to bring it around toward your face. Now, the first time you see the light, you holler. I'll holler. I'll holler so loud my girl will hear me in Philadelphia. You ready? Turn it on. I want to see stars and angels and Ruth. Come on. Let me see the light. Bring it closer. You see anything? Yeah. Yeah. Like a locomotive headlight. Way off in the fog. Bring it closer. Please. Closer. Al, the light is full in your eyes. It's right in front of you. No. I can't be blind. Please, sir, please. You got ways of fixing guys up. I tried my best. I fought. I'm not asking for so much. Well, this examination isn't final, Al. Besides, you'll probably need another operation. When? When? Six months, maybe a year. Al, I'm going to give you a card. A card that'll teach you to read with your fingers. That's for blind people. I don't want any of that stuff. I want to stand on my own. Al, people get the wrong idea about blindness. A blind man isn't helpless. He just has to do things differently. That's all. Al, are you listening to me? No, I'm not listening. Why don't God just strike me dead? Look, uh, I want to get this over with quick, Miss Pfeiffer. You got your pencil? Al, what harm would it do to wait another week or so? You heard what the doctor said. I made up my mind. What about giving Ruth a chance to decide? Decide what? How to ruin her life? Well, tell her the truth. Find out what she wants. Sure, tell her the truth. So she'll pity me. I'm leaving pity out of this. Aren't you leaving love out of it, too? She'll need another guy. She'll fall in love. You're going to write this letter or I have to ask Lee Diamond to do it. Go ahead. Dear Ruth, I, uh, I know this is going to be kind of a surprise to you, but I, I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm not coming back to Philly. Not now, not ever. And about getting married, well, it just ain't up my alley, that's all. I hope you'll be happy, and I hope you'll find a new boyfriend real soon. Yours, Al Schmidt. That's all, Miss Pfeiffer. Short and sweet. And you can do me a big favor. Get it in the mail right away. Hello? Miss Ruth Hartley, please. This is Miss Hartley. On your call to San Diego. Yes? Private Schmidt cannot come to the phone. Miss Virginia Pfeiffer of the Red Cross wants to know if she may accept your call. Oh, yes, yes. Go ahead, San Diego. Hello, Ruth? Yes, Miss Pfeiffer. I just got Al's letter. Ruth, please try to understand. He isn't breaking with you because he doesn't love you. But then why? Ruth, Al has lost the sight of one eye and may never regain the sight in the other. That's why he broke with you. He's afraid of becoming a burden. Do you understand now? Hello? Hello? Yes, I, I understand. Ruth, do you still love him? Do you want him? I mean, as a husband. Oh, yes, yes, I do. But he may be totally blind for the rest of his life. What of it? I didn't fall in love with his eyes. I fell in love with him. That hasn't changed just because something's happened to his eyes. Then keep writing to him, Ruth. And try not to mind if he doesn't answer. Just be patient. We have a pretty big job ahead of us. But we can do it. I'm so grateful to you for everything. I guess Al still doesn't know what a wonderful girl he has. Goodbye, Ruth. Try not to worry. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Hey, any of you birds here talk about going home for Christmas? Yeah, I wish I could believe it. Well, I heard everybody who's fit goes home. Walking cases, too. That leads me out. Me, too. You're a walking case, Al. Yeah, except I got no place to go, see? What's the first thing you're going to do when you get home, Irish? <laughs> Get myself a nice little street corner for my new business. Hey, look who's coming. Hi there, Virginia. Hi, Hi. Come on in. Yeah, Irish has been telling us about his new business. Yeah, it's on a corner. Oh, a bank or a saloon. Which is it, Irish? <laughs> yeah, not even close. Twice in his life, my old man got his name in the paper, see? The first time in 1917, he was the first to enlist in Milwaukee. The second time in 1930, he was the first bet to sell unemployed apples. <laughs> Any of you guys want a piece of my street corner? I ain't right, but I'm honest. Count me in, Irish and Schmidt, apples and shoelaces. We ought to do all right. What's the matter with you guys? Think no one's learned anything since 1930? Think everybody's had their eyes shut and their brains in cold storage? I'll tell you guys something funny. I'm scared, see? And if a man come along, anybody, and told me I'd have a decent job, I'd go down on my knees and wash his feet. What about the G.I. Bill of Rights? They guarantee your old job. How about that? Yeah, guarantee your job. Well, I wrote for my old job, and you know what the boss wrote back? He's in a new business. You can't get your old job back if it just don't exist, can you? Well, that's got to be considered. Considered? How long did we get to consider it? Guadalcanal. They said, get going, and we went. Well, that's okay. Except I want some considering now. I got a wife. I want to support her. Can I put my two cents worth in, gentlemen? You boys are all jumpy. Nobody can blame you. You're shut off here, and sometimes it must seem as if nobody cares. Who does? People care. Civilians aren't strange animals. They're your own fathers and mothers and wives, your girls and friends. And if they can help it, you're not going to be let down. So they send some guys back to college, get some guys jobs. So maybe we'll even have prosperity while we catch up on the things the poor civilians had to go without. But what happens after a couple of years? Answer me that. A bonus march. How about that, huh? A bonus march. <laughs> okay, Al, okay. Now you listen. All of you listen. One happy afternoon when God was feeling kind of good, he, he sat down and he thought of a rich, beautiful country. And he named it the USA, all of it, Al. The hills, the rivers, the lands, the whole works. Don't tell me we can't make it work in peace like we do in war. Don't tell me we can't pull together. Don't you see it, guys? Can't you see it? You asking me? I... Yeah? Yeah, I'm asking you like everybody else. I don't see any of those things you said God made. I don't see a thing. Well, I didn't mean it that way, Al. I... No, you didn't. But it's the only way I heard it. So long, you guys. I got a letter to write. Come on, Al. I'll help you. It's the Santa Claus. Dear Santa, I'd like a shiny tin cup for Christmas. Oh, and a few pencils that you can spare. Al, can I talk to you, Al? What's on your mind? You. Al, suppose the worst happens to you. Suppose you never get your sight back. There's still an awful lot left. Don't you see, Al, blind or not, once you get over your fear of being helpless, the whole world is wide open to you. What do you worry about? A couple of months from now, I'll be able to see you all right. I, I hope so. I just thought I'd tell you what was on my mind. Yeah, thanks. Oh, uh, excuse me, is that Private Schmidt? Uh, yeah. Message from the captain. The captain wants to see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll see that he's there. Thank you, miss. The old man, huh? Now what have I done? Private Schmidt. Yes, sir. Schmidt, I have great news. You ought to receive the Navy Cross. Congratulations. Navy Cross? Well, never in all my born days. The Navy Cross. Corporal Diamond's getting one, too. Although the ceremonies won't be held in the same place. Your hometown is quite proud of you, Schmidt. So the Navy's decided that you'll get your award at the Philadelphia Navy Yard. Corporal Diamond will be on the train with you and effect your transfer to the Naval Hospital. You'll leave tomorrow. Couldn't ask for a better Christmas present than that, could you? I, uh, I gotta go back there? It's your hometown. Why not? But it isn't my home, sir. I'm going to move. But you've got a girl in Philadelphia, haven't you? No, sir. She and I are all washed up. I got nobody. I think I know what's on your mind, Schmidt. Believe me, the people who knew you before, you mean just as much to them now as you ever did. And a lot more. Until you learn that, how are you going to make any progress? I'm making progress, sir. I'm trading a couple of eyes for a ribbon on my chest. Now I'm going home so people can stare at me. That's fine progress. You're under orders, Schmidt. And you're going back. Goodbye, my son. And good luck. Thank you. Lee's seeing about the tickets, Al. He'll be right back. Oh, Ginny, I've been carrying a beef inside of me, but it hasn't been against you. You're great. I'm glad you think so, Al. Then will you do me a favor? Send a telegram to Ruthie. Ask her, ask her to meet me at the station in Philly, will you? Al, 
Oh, that's wonderful. No, it's not for the reason you think. I just want to get things straightened out once and for all. Okay, Al. Tickets all set. Well, keep your powder dry, Virginia. And thanks for everything. Goodbye, Lee. Good luck. You know, some of these days I'm going to come back and find out what you really look like. I'll be an awful disappointment to you. Ah, uh, no, you won't. You're tops. Goodbye. Just don't stop fighting, Al. Don't. So long, Virginia. <laughs> I'm sorry, but would you, would you mind reading that back to me? Yes, miss. The telegram is from San Diego. It says, Al arriving 30th Street Station, 2 p.m. Thursday. I have done all I can. The rest is up to you. It's signed, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, dear God. He's got to come home where he belongs. He's got to know he's wanted. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll return with the last act of Pride of the Marines. Starring John Garfield and Dane Clark, and co starring Eleanor Parker, who will next be seen in Warner Brothers of Human Bondage. Are you making any New Year's resolutions, Sally? A few. Like getting to see some more good movies. They're releasing some honeys in 1946. Such as? San Antonio is on my list. I was over at Warner Brothers when they were filming some of Errol Flynn's gunfights. My, it was exciting to watch. An adventure story? Yes, but there's a girl in it, too. Alexis Smith. Is Alexis as glamorous as usual? Yes, even more so. San Antonio takes place in Texas in 1877, and the costumes are so gay and technicolor. Those were the days when clothes really were glamorous. A problem to care for, though, weren't they, Sally? Yes, indeed. That was B.L., <laughs> before Lux, you know. You should read some of the directions they used to give for washing silks. One calls for grating potatoes in cold water, then leaving them for 48 hours without stirring. After this, the liquid was drained off and the silk dipped up and down in it. Not a trick to do every night in the week, Sally. Thank goodness all we do now is toss silk or rayon undies into lukewarm Lux suds. Why, my undies get luxed again and again and they still look lovely. Of course, Sally. Actual tests show that slips and gowns washed 30 times in Lux were still fresh and colorful. Lux care is really gentle. Identical underthings washed with a strong soap, hot water, and handled roughly soon looked faded and drab. So we girls are luckier than the bells of the 1870s. Their clothes may have had glamour, but ours are more comfortable. But I think today's girls are plenty glamorous too, Sally, and we'll give Lux some of the credit. Remember, Lux Care keeps pretty colors lovely and fresh up to three times as long. It's thrifty care for undies too, other nice washables. Here's Mr. Keeley, your producer. Be sure to join us after the play when we welcome to the microphone Al Schmidt himself the real-life hero of tonight's play. Here's Act Three of Pride of the Marines, with John Garfield as Al, Eleanor Parker as Ruth, and Dane Clark as Lee. It's late at night, and as their train roars eastward, Al Schmidt and Lee Diamond look through the window of their compartment at the shadowy, snow-covered countryside that sweeps by. I keep looking through the window, like I could see something. Uh, it's pretty late, Al. You want to go to bed? Huh? No, no, I feel kind of jumpy. Jumpy? I've been thinking, that telegram I sent Ruth, about her meeting me tomorrow. Yeah? Well, it's crazy. What's the sense of seeing Ruth, just to break up with her? Uh, Lee, you sent another telegram, tell her not to come. No, wait a minute, that's not fair. You're going to see her. Lee, don't make me fight you. But you promised, Al. You and me, we don't have to be polite to each other. What does welcome home mean to a blind man? Maybe more than to anyone else. You're going to send that wire? Yeah, I'll send a wire if you want me to, but first I want to tell you something. Al, back there on the canal after you got that grenade in your face, you remember what you did? You pulled your 45 and I thought you meant to kill yourself, but you kept yelling out, tell me where they are, Lee, tell me where they are and I'll shoot them. And I thought to myself, that guy Schmidt's got more guts than any man alive. So what? So I was wrong, Al. I don't think you have any guts. I think you're kind of yellow. You haven't got guts enough to see Ruth. Shut up. You didn't listen to Marines because you had any sense. 
You didn't care about that this was the USA and you lived in it. You were just a hopped up guy looking for excitement. That's a lie and you're a stinking liar. All right, then ask yourself a question. Would you do it all over again? If you knew you was going to be blind, would you do it over again? Oh, Al. Al, don't you think I'd crawl on my hands and knees to a doctor if he could take an eye out of my head and put it into yours? But he can't, Al, he can't. I know it's a stinking war, but it's got to be won. And, and you're one of the guys who lost some chips in the winning. Everybody's got problems, Al, everybody. What problems have you got? Your wife don't have to turn over on her inside when she sees you. When you go for a job, there ain't anybody going to say we got no use for ex-heroes like you. That's what you think. Sure, there'll be guys who won't hire you even when they know you can handle a job. But there's guys who won't hire me because my name is Diamond instead of Jones. Don't you see what I mean? You and me, we need the same kind of a world. We need a country to live in where nobody gets booted around for any reason. I'm all mixed up. Mixed up and scared. Dragging at the heels in yellow. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. You're not yellow. But that girl loves you, Al. You two can make out. She's the real good. Okay, okay. Didn't what I say mean anything? Yeah, but we still send that wire. All right, Al. I'll send it. Well, this is it, Al. We're coming into the station. It's good we're late. Ruth got that wire then for sure. Yeah. You know, it's too bad we can't get those Navy crosses together. Yeah. Say, if you plan to come to the hospital with me, forget it. Your wife's sitting in New York biting her fingernails. Oh, that's all right. The trains to New York run pretty often. Ah, just stick me in a cab. Well, let's get off. Hang on. Okay. Boy, it sure smells like Philly. Say, uh, you don't see Ruth around, do you, huh? No, Al, I don't see Ruth anywhere. That's fine, swell. Now that's off my mind. Uh, look, Al, if I'm not going to take you to the hospital, i got to find out about a train. Yeah, sure. So do you mind waiting here? Go on, go ahead. I'll be right back. Excuse me. Yes? I recognize you from Al's snapshot. You're Ruth, aren't you? Yes. I'm Lee Diamond. Didn't you get the telegram? I had to come anyway. Oh, Lee, please help me. I have to get Al back among his friends where he lived. He's got to know... Look, he's... he's pretty set on not going, Ruth. Where are you taking him now? Navy Hospital. He's got to come home first. Look, I have a car outside. Couldn't you lie to him? Tell him, tell him it's a Navy car or something. Oh, I don't know. It's... it's... Oh, I want one chance, Lee. Won't you give it to me? I'll... Well, I'll see what I can do. Look, you walk just ahead of us at the car. Thank you, I wouldn't be doing this, Al, except I can get a train for New York in ten minutes. Oh, that's swell. Well, there's a Navy car. And, hey, say, there's a good-looking wave in there ready to drive to the hospital. A wave? Say, that's class, huh? Don't step out of line. She's a Louie. Well, I'm going to miss you, you old ball of fire. Yeah. Say, um, what were them old Hebrew words you told me? Oh. Show them a lesson. Good luck. Yeah. Well, uh, tell them I like him, kid. That goes double for you, Al. Okay, Lieutenant. I'll write you, Al. Thanks. So long, Lee. So long. You hear those bells, Lieutenant? That's from Independence Hall. <laughs> I used to eat by that bell. Somehow, whenever it struck 12 o'clock, I got hungry. Out on the canal, I remember that bell whenever I got hungry. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, good day for hunting, huh? Nice and cold. You ever go hunting? Uh-huh. Couldn't hit the broad side of a barn right now. Got eye trouble. Is uh, this it? Is this the hospital? Uh-huh. It's okay, uh, just tell me where the steps are. Yes. <laughs> you know, I used to count steps when I was a kid. Now I'm, I'm back at it again. Now. One, two, three, four, five. Any more? Uh-huh. Six, seven, eight. Wait a minute. There's a, there's a post here for the railing. Yeah, it's here. This isn't any hospital. I... I... Ruth. You're home, Al. Please forgive me. I had to. But why? Why? It's no good. Oh, it's the day before Christmas. It won't work. I'm not going in. Look.
Look, if you and I are finished, all right. But why can't you stay to a Christmas party with your friends? Al! Al! Oh, Al! Oh, how are you, Loretta? Oh, I read all about you in the paper. You killed 200 Japs, didn't you, Al? Well, so they tell me. Ma! Al's home! He's home! Al! What's it like when you can't see, Al? Is it like being in a dark room? Yeah, that's it. Al, oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, hello, Ella May. Well, don't I get a kiss? Just so long Jim don't catch us. <laughs> Say, where is he? Well, he'll be home any minute. Now, you just make yourself right at home again. Loretta, come with me. Ruth, you and Al going in there and sit down. Sofa still in the same place? Everything's just the same, Al. Look at me, I made it. Didn't bump into anything. You're looking fine, Al. How about you? Why, oh, I, I look the same, I guess. We're awfully proud of you, Al. Uh, Cocktails, huh. Al. We're being very fancy in your honor. Cocktails, eh? Well, that's class, all right. Hey, there's Daddy's car. Dad's home. Hi, honey. Is he here yet? He just came, Daddy. He's in the sitting room. Jim? Al, you no good Marine. Boy, it's good to see you. Me too. Here's your drink, Al. There's none for you, Jim, till you wash up. And hurry. Dinner's about ready. See that, Al? Still a hand <laughs> Sure sounds like it. We have a super Christmas tree, Al. It's right there in the middle of the room. Swell. You want me to tell you what's on it? No, never There's mind. There's a great big star on top. I don't want to hear about it. Al. Oh, honey, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just kind of tired, that's all. It, it's a nice tree, Lots of colored light. Sure, honey, sure. In a minute, you can tell me all about it, huh? Your old room's all ready, Al. Got new wallpaper. Well, sorry, Jim. I'm, I'm going to Chicago to live with my brother. Oh. oh, I didn't know that. Well, uh, I'll see you in a minute, huh? But, Al, I thought you were going to stay here and marry Ruth. Al, you're not different, are you? Of course he isn't. I'm a little different, I suppose. No, you're not. I can't see Loretta's Christmas tree, can I? I can't see you. Doesn't that make me different? I don't mean your eyes. I mean you. And I think you're just the same, I can tell. Thanks. Okay, kids. Come and get it. Dining room still in the same place? Straight ahead, Al. Watch me make this on my own. You see? Right in my old place. There. <laughs> I bet you didn't remember to light the candles, did you, Ella May? Oh, dear, of course not. <laughs> Here you are. Remember me? The best little candle lighter in Philadelphia. <laughs> Al, you did it. <laughs> I remembered. I remembered where they always were. Say, uh, Al, there's a blind fellow working at our factory now. Loretta, stop reaching for things. Haven't you got a tongue? Sure, Mom, but my arm's longer. This, uh, this blind fellow, uh, he went to a school. Uh, how does he get to the plant? By bus. Somebody takes him, huh? No, 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 no. He goes by himself. Al, your old boss says if you go to that school, you can have your old job back anytime. He did, huh? Yes, he said they'd be proud to have you. Well, tell him I'm sorry. It just doesn't fit in with my plans. Well, uh, well, what do you say we tear into this turkey, huh? Sure smells good. Yes, sir, sure smells good. So they left us alone, huh? Yes, Al. Where'd they say they went? They took Loretta to see her girlfriend. She's got a present for her. Ruthie, while they're gone, right now, I, I want you to take me to the hospital. But, Al, you said I you... told them I'd stay because I didn't want any arguments. Now I want to go. Al, I want one fair chance to talk to you, and you've got to give it to There's me. There's nothing you can say. I ain't said to myself a thousand times. You don't know what I want to say. Don't pull any tears on me. That's why I didn't want to come in the first place. I'm not pulling any tears. You didn't want to see me because you love me. Ruth, Ruth, I'm helpless. I'd be a drag on you all my life. Why don't you let me decide that? Because I'm nobody's lapdog, that's why. Do you think I want to live out my life knowing every day of the year you married me out of pity? I got too much pride for that. Pride? You haven't got enough pride to face the truth. You want to be lonely. Why, you haven't got the pride to accept being blind like a man. Get me out of here. I won't. You're going to stay here and listen to me. That's fine. That's great. But you missed one car, and I may be blind, but I know where the phone is in this house. I'm calling a cab. Al, look out! The Christmas tree. Loretta's Christmas tree. Oh, Al, don't be hurt. i got to get out of here. Get a chair, please. If you go now, you'll leave me to stumble all through my life the way you just did. I don't pity you, Al. I love you. Suppose there never was a war, darling. What if we were married and one day I got hit by a car and was left a cripple? Would you walk out on me? Oh, darling, I need you. Sure, you'll need me too, but what's wrong with two people needing each other? Al, I, I don't know what I'll do if you leave me now. I need you too much. Ruthie, don't I? I don't want to make you cry. It's, it's just that I was a, an ordinary guy before, and I wasn't with you then, and now I'm, 
I'm less than an ordinary guy. I can't see. Less than ordinary? Oh, sweetheart, don't you realize that every single man who's fought is no longer ordinary? Don't you realize that millions of people were looking the Guadalcanal every day while you were fighting there? They were. Every civilized person in the world, I guess. And it wasn't any ordinary guy who kept the Japs back that night. It was one of the most extraordinary fellas in the world. You, Al Schmidt. Ruthie. Downing. Ruthie. In the name of the President of the United States, the Commander of the South Pacific Area and South Pacific Force takes pleasure in presenting the Navy Cross to Private Albert A. Schmidt, United States Marine Corps Reserve, for extraordinary heroism in the action against a strong Japanese landing force in the Solomon Islands on August 21st, 1942. Under greatest difficulties, the enemy was met and repulsed. In the action, Schmidt was seriously wounded. His courage and fortitude contributed largely to the defeat of the enemy. W.F. Halsey, Admiral, U.S. Navy. I congratulate you, Schmidt. I'm mighty proud, sir. The Honor Guard will parade now. Yes, sir. Oh, Al, it was just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, how do we get out of here? This way, Al. Well, let's not walk. Let's take a chair. That one over there, with the red top. How do you know it's red? It's uh, kind of fuzzy, but uh, it's red, isn't it? Yes, darling, it is red. Now, look, honey, don't get your hopes up. That doesn't mean I'm going to see you again. Whichever way it is, we'll do it together. Where to, folks? Home. We're going home. Our stars will return in a moment to welcome Al Schmidt in person to our microphone. This afternoon, lots of women were busy getting prettied up for parties tonight, like Mrs. Evans. While she was sitting under the hairdryer, she thought... My, I've got so much to do yet. Press my dress. I hope my silver slippers aren't tarnished. I forgot to look at them. And get out Jim's studs. I do hope he remembers I said white flowers. Marie! Oh, Marie! Uh, Marie, can you do my nails? Is it down in the book, Mrs. Evans? No, but they're dreadful, Marie. Well, maybe I can squeeze you in. My hands are awful, aren't they? Jim has a fit every time he sees them. How's this polish? Mm, that's too dark. It only makes my hands look redder. You've let your hands go, Mrs. Evans. I know, but I can't help it. Doing dishes three times a day is no beauty treatment. You have sensitive skin, Mrs. Evans. Have you tried Lux Flakes for dishes? <laughs> Lately, I've been using anything the store sent. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if that's your trouble. I had a customer with hands just about as bad as yours. And you know what she told me? She just stopped the strong soap she'd been using and changed to Lux. You'd be amazed what a difference it made. It really helped her hands? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Why, it wasn't long before her hands were just as nice and soft and smooth as they'd been before. Well, that's going to be my number one New Year's resolution. Nothing but Lux for dishes. That's an excellent resolution for all housewives who care about their hands. Tests made by scores of women prove that changing from strong soaps to Lux really does get rid of red, rough dishpan hands. Leaves them soft and smooth again. Besides, Lux is thrifty. Ounce for ounce, it washes up to twice as many dishes as any of ten other leading soaps tested. If you can't get Lux the first time you try, try again. More is on the way. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. I don't know of any handsomer way of greeting the new year than tonight's inspiring performance by John Garfield, Eleanor Parker, and Dane Clark. Thanks, Bill, and I don't know of any role in pictures I'd have rather played. I think I feel the same way. Did you know Ruth Hartley in real life, Eleanor? Yes. Johnny and I both went to Philadelphia when Mrs. Schmidt was awarded a citation as Mrs. G.I. How about you, Dane? Did you ever know Al Schmidt? Not in real life, Bill, but after playing the picture, I certainly feel as if I knew him well. Well, I know you're anxious to hear from Al, and here he is to talk to us from New York City. Al Schmidt in person. Thank you, Colonel Keeley. And it's great to talk to uh, another Philadelphian. And also Eleanor Parker, Dane Clark, and John Garfield. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Al. How'd you like the show? Great. 
Hey, you're better Schmidt than Schmidt is. <laughs> <laughs> they don't uh, come better than the real thing, Al. Tell us, how are things going for you? Just fine. Ruth and I and our little son are looking forward to a great new year. And from here, it looks pretty good. It's great to hear you say that, Al. Some people are almost afraid to look ahead these days. Well, I'm not afraid to look ahead, Colonel. <clears throat> and, as, and as for the future, I'm putting everything I have into saving bonds and stamps. Well, that's the best investment in the future that I know, Al. Right, Colonel. Where else can you get $4 for every three that you put in and give your family security and practically everything you want them to have? And if your audience tonight is, are making New Year's resolutions, tell them to suck every penny they can into saving bonds. Al, you couldn't have left us with a better New Year's thought. Thank you, Al Schmidt, and from all of us, our heartiest wishes for the future. Thank you, Colonel Keeley, and good night. And now, Bill, tell us what's going to be on Lux for next week. Next Monday night, we're presenting a play that's aimed straight at your heartstrings. Hal Wallace's screen success, You Came Along. And to start 1946 with a special treat, we're featuring one of Hollywood's outstanding stars, Van Johnson. <laughs> Along with Van, as an added touch for the new year, we present a new star in the role that made her famous, Elizabeth Scott, and also Don DeFore from the original screen cast. Boy, that sure ought to make a very exciting evening, Bill. Good night. Good night, night and happy 1946. In a short time, we welcome in the new year. What it holds for us and for the world, no one can tell. But this we know. There is in our hands today the greatest power ever made available to man. Whether that power will be used for good or evil is our unavoidable responsibility. There can be no temporizing with the future and no compromising with the past. A new world must come from this responsibility, a world knit into one common brotherhood of man, dedicated in complete sincerity to tolerance and peace under God. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, join me in sending you our heartiest wishes for the new year and invite you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Van Johnson, Elizabeth Scott, and Don DeFore in You Came Along. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. Dane Clark will next be seen in Warner Brothers' Stolen Life. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Tune in again next Monday night to hear You Came Along with Van Johnson, Elizabeth Scott, and Don DeFore. The Spry Treat of the Week. Chocolate pie, rich chocolate filling topped with billowy meringue and a tender flaky spry crust. Mmm, delicious. For delicate, mouth-melting pastry, rely on Spry, pure, bland, all-vegetable shortening at its creamy best. That's Spry, S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of You Came Along with Van Johnson, Elizabeth Scott, and Don DeFore. And why not tune in a half hour early to hear Joan Davis over most of these stations? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>